Hi, folks. Welcome to the Resilient Business Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lahote. This is real talk for small business owners who are navigating changing times. And with me today, I have Dr. Patty Barch of Naturally Unbridled Wellness. And this is in Onalaska, Wisconsin. Patty is one of my best clients. I wanted to have her on the show because she has a lot to say about how to succeed in the wellness business. And so Patty and I met about three years ago where we first started talking about how we might work together. And like I said, she's been one of my most successful clients ever since. So I want to introduce you to Patty, who uh, is not only a PhD researcher, we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. She's also a naturopath and she is a business coach, very successful at that as well. So Patty, if you would, I think people would love to hear about your uh, sort of journey into uh, how you ended up in the wellness business in the first place. So welcome. Sure. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate the invitation to be on your show today. And yeah, I have a very unique background for someone who's in the natural health field in that I started my career in the biotechnology industry. I did cancer research for eight years. When I started working for the biotech company, we were looking for a cure for cancer. By the time I left, eight years later, we had stopped looking for a cure we were looking for a drug that would keep your cancer from growing and spreading, but you'd have to stay on that drug for the rest of your life. And that's really the way the pharmaceutical industry has gone. They realize whether their drugs cure you or kill you, their financial outcome is the same, they lose a customer. So the focus has become to create drugs that don't actually cure you, they just keep your symptoms at a manageable level. Mm -hmm. The brilliance of that business plan is that those drugs create side effects that they treat with other drugs that create side effects. So the average American over 40 is on four or more prescription medications and is not getting any healthier. So that job no longer resonated with me. I left that career and spent four years as an animal nutritionist. My undergrad degree is actually in animal science and I have a master's degree in biology and two doctorates in natural health. Then I taught high school for seven years. Um, I taught high school animal science and biotechnology at a couple of um, trade schools in Massachusetts while I started my wellness practice. But my husband is from Minnesota and we realized if we ever wanted to go on vacation anywhere besides Minnesota, that maybe we needed to live a little closer. So 10 years ago, we moved to the Midwest. I set up my practice in Onalaska, Wisconsin, not knowing a single person in the state so that's a little bit about how I got started. And then over the past 10 years, my practice has been extremely dynamic as far as the services that I've um, offered to people and how my business has grown and changed over the years. But I think that that's actually um, part of what makes a practice successful is being open to new ideas and in to getting rid of stuff that isn't working well. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that background. Um, you know, when I was looking at your website earlier today, it popped out at me that the, the top of your website, I'm going to read it real quick here. It's just a sure. quote. It's ask yourself one question. Is the person helping you to achieve your wellness goals an expert in wellness or an expert in diseases? So why is that that question really at the top of your website? Can you, can you explain that? Yeah, and it's funny that you bring that up today because I before we got on the call, I was working on a newsletter. I send a monthly newsletter to all of my clients and I was writing in the newsletter about how I continue to have new clients who come in and the reason that brings them through the door is actually a side effect of their medication, but nobody has figured that out yet. And whenever I see a client who isn't making the progress that I would anticipate, I always go right into their prescriptions and start looking up the side effects. And then it's, it's yet to not be the answer of why they haven't been making progress. And so, you know, the, the medical model is no longer focused on wellness as it was many, many years ago. It's a focus on disease management. And I use the whack-a-mole um, analogy that anytime a symptom pops up, they whack it down with a prescription. But 
the, you know, the body's like, I always go back to that cartoon when we were little kids and the, there's like this little kid walking by the dike and the dike pops a leak and he sticks his finger in. And then, so the dike pops another leak and then the finger and then a toe and his nose, right? And he just keeps like trying to keep the dike from leaking. And fundamentally your body is going to do the same thing. Like if you squelch a symptom, it's going to find another path to yell at you, to let you know that there's an imbalance that needs your attention. And so just playing whack-a-mole with prescriptions is never going to result in, um, in any kind of wellness. And uh, a colleague of mine, one of my mentors used to have two expressions that I, I took to heart. One is that he referred to, and he was a medical doctor, um, he referred to the prescription pad as the permission slips. Um, so that if if you're going to keep doing what you've been doing that led to this imbalance, the prescription just gives you permission to keep doing that. Um, the other thing he used to say is you will never medicate your way out of a condition that you behaved yourself into. So yeah, pretty wise mentor. Wow. Those, yeah, those are pretty profound. I mean, the per permission slip thing. I mean, yeah you that could be applied to so many things so many people these days going through lots of things so appreciate that um so that's that's kind of the philosophy wellness versus healthcare type thing or sick care um tell me specifically more about your actual practice naturally unbridled um what makes you guys hum there what's working what's new you know what have you found what do you love those types of things what do you offer yeah, sure. Thanks. So, you know, we're extremely unique in the region for our area. Um, when I first came here as a naturopath, nobody had heard that word before. And I had no network from which to build my practice. It's like, hi, I'm brand new here. I've done, I'm doing something you've never heard of and you don't know me from anyone. <laughs> Can I help you? So, you know, it was definitely a lot of work in the beginning to get people to come to my practice and then to build momentum over time. And as I mentioned earlier, it's it's been a very dynamic process. There are services that I was very successful with years ago that as I've been introduced to new technology, I've just phased those out because it just, I guess in good conscience, I can't recommend that service when I know that this service creates these really dramatic outcomes. Um, and so in my practice, like I'm a naturopath and I do wellness consultations. And uh, we also have the pulse electromagnetic field therapy. We have um, three of the pulse XL pro systems. We have an XX system, we have a rental system. Um, so we we're very busy doing PEMF and I have uh, some employees here that that's all they do. Uh, we also offer some add-on therapies. So uh, hydrogen, ozone, cold laser. Um, we also have uh, thermography. <laughs> So we take thermal images to help identify pain and pathology in the body. And then we have some really weird stuff like brain tap and rife therapy and that sort of stuff. Cause I'm a gadget girl and I, and I love all that stuff. Sure. Um, I've reduced my wellness capacity to three days a week because I also do the business coaching for wellness professionals. And so I do that um, a couple of days a week also. So, um, but what's great is my wellness practice is still humming while I'm doing things like this podcast with you. Yeah, excellent. Yes, it sounds like you've found some, you know, ways to sort of leverage leverage your time using technology, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So that's that's I'm sure lots of people will be interested to hear more about that. Um, what about uh, 2020? Mm -hmm. um, we all faced challenges that we never foresee, foresaw, and uh, and had to deal, had to pivot, had to navigate you know, new waters and things like that. How were you specifically impacted by the events of 2020? And how have you sort of come out of that? Or um, to what degree is it still continuing? And to what degree have you come out of it, I guess? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I mean, nobody saw this coming. And thankfully, we've had enough momentum going in the practice that we were able to just ride out the wave of the COVID shutdown because um, I know that a lot of small businesses were devastated and destroyed from um, you know, being shut down for even just a month. But my practice was closed for five weeks. Uh, I still came in the office every day. I kept my office manager on um, 
salary and she would um, manage the phone and emails and take orders for supplements. And then I would go to the post office every day and, and try to ship vitamins and remedies and stuff to people. Um, but we had you know no services going on at that time. Um, when we were closed for five weeks and when we reopened, um, we, it was not the same game, right? So when we opened, there were several things that had to change within the office in order to kind of meet the new standard of the day. And so one of the things that we did, of course, was a staggered reopening because it's not like you can close the doors one day and then open the next day and all those people are at the door ready to come back in, right? And people were still in different phases of um, fear, I would say, and being willing to come out and do a therapy or a service. Mm -hmm. So we did a staggered reopening. So close for five weeks and a staggered reopening. But when we did reopen, we also reduced our capacity for all of our services. So our capacity, depending on the service, reduced from um, 25 to 50%, depending on the service. So when we reopened our, you know, our earning potential had been cut by 25 to 50%, depending on the service. So, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had time built into the schedule to wipe down rooms in between. We also didn't want someone checking out and checking in at the same time. Like we're just making um, concessions in those areas. But by the time we ran the year end numbers, even though the, the total gross for the year 2020 was down a little below 2018, when you extrapolate out for the week, you know, the 47 weeks versus 52 weeks, we were actually up about $800 a week, even with the reduced capacity and the staggered reopening. And when I ran those numbers um, of the $800 a week, over $600 a week was revenue from the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. Um, so the PEMF is, was definitely really supporting the revenue of the practice. And what's not, there's really no way for me to, to run these numbers easily, but we also do add-on services during our PEMF sessions. Mm -hmm. So if someone's coming in for PEMF, they can actually do inhaled ozone or inhaled hydrogen or a cold laser for an additional small fee. And so the net revenue per visit is increased and that there's no way for me to really run the, the data to know if the revenue is an add on to a PEMF or somebody who just came in just to do the ozone or something. So really of that $800 a week, I'm going to guess it's closer to $700 a week of it is directly related to the PEMF. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Thanks for that info. So yeah, you've been you've been sort of emphasizing the PEMF, um, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. That's how you and I met originally uh, with pulse centers. Can you talk a little bit about what prompted you to look at that, and you know, sort of what was the story of of why or whatever got you interested in yeah. something that a lot of people also have never heard of, frankly. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's so funny when you say, can you talk a little bit about, I'm like, no, well, I can't talk a little bit. Like I can not stop talking about this. So yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of the story of how I got introduced to PEMF and how we incorporated it into our practice and how it's really become the backbone of what we do here. So um, in around January of 2018, I, I knew there were some transitions happening in my practice. I had a team of independent contractors who had been working for me for one to two years depending. And I, I got their calendar so full that they decided to go open their own practices. <laughs> and so I'm watching about $200,000 a year of revenue just go down the street. And so I'm like, okay, I need to change direction here. I need to pivot and bring in services that aren't going to walk out <laughs> and go take business with them. I wanted to be able to continue to build momentum on a service that's providing um, results for people. So anyway, my first step was to go into a Facebook group that I was in with uh, wellness practitioners and just type in there, hey, what are you guys doing in your, in your practice that somewhat of a passive therapy is getting really good results and has a good return on investment? And, you know, a bunch of people chimed in with a bunch of different things. And for various reasons, I'm like, eh, not really interested in that, or I've done that, or somebody in the town is already doing that. 
not too interested. But a few people mentioned different types of PEMF, but what really got my attention was two practitioners privately and independently reached out to me, sent me private messages saying almost verbatim the same thing. And it was, you've got to check out PEMF, you've got to check out Pulse Centers, and you've got to check out the XL Pro. They talked about the um, the types of results that they were seeing and that they, you know, one of them is like, I met, I've met the owner of the company and this company is amazing. And I was like, okay, you have my attention. So I went to the Pulse Center's website and at the time you couldn't get any pricing without submitting your name and email. I, I think that's changed now. But I put in my name and email address and I got emailed the pricing and I was a little bit like sticker shocked because I had spent, I mean, I had spent, I think, up to $25,000 before on um, wellness devices. But, you know, this was a whole other price ticket range, but it didn't scare me away because, I, you know, like I said, I've I had a history of investing in wellness technology and seeing great results with it. Um, and then the next thing that happened was I got an email from Pulse Centers asking if I'd like to speak with a sales rep. And that's how you and I became um, connected. And of course, like most people, and of course, you know, I work with a lot of Pulse practitioners or Pulse professionals that the, my first question was, tell me about those cheaper machines. <laughs> and I know like in talking to other practitioners, they're doing the same things, but I'm a go big or go home kind of girl. And I knew that based on the testimony of my colleagues, and then I spent over three hours on YouTube watching videos from um, practitioners and um, patients or clients and the types of success stories that they were sharing. And I was like, okay, I'm convinced that this device works and um, I'm gonna bring it in. And, and then I know to, to this day, you're still amazed that I bought the machine without ever having tried it. Never tried it, right? <laughs> Yeah, no. It's but, great. you know, I, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel and I run a very busy practice and the closest center was like an hour and a half away from me. And I just trusted that it was going to work based on the feedback that I had received. So we are actually today uh, is the anniversary of our first session. Um, the machine oh. arrived and and I my Facebook memories this morning showed my husband sitting in the chair reading the manual. Like, how do we run this thing? Because we hadn't done the training <laughs> <That's> yet. <great. laughs> Um, so we, you know, we actually sat on our machine for a, a more, a little more than a month, um, because I, I was a firm believer of, I am not going to do a session with a paid client until I know what I'm doing with this machine, because I want to make sure that I get the best possible results for this person, because that gives me the best likelihood of being able to convert them to a multi-session package. So we let my staff play with it and we played with it a little bit, and, but we were waiting to get trained on it. So when we went to the live training, um, the first day we learned about how to turn the knobs and use the accessories. And the second day was the, um, the business training. And at the time there, it was recommended that everybody give away two free sessions and then invite people, I think for a 12 pack or something. And you know, people were, other um, business owners were in the room saying, yeah, we're doing the free sessions, but nobody's converting. And I, I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I raised my hand and I'm like, hey, so we're new here. We're actually starting on Monday. We started like the first Monday in April of 2018. Um, but we have our device booked solid for the next three weeks with paid appointments. And like heads whipped around like, what? Like, how are you doing that? And I'm like, well, we're sort of doing two free appointments, but not to anyone who isn't willing to pay for one. So we were doing a three for 99 special. Mm -hmm. So we, what happened was fast forward, we get back to our office Monday, we start doing appointments and thank God we actually saw miracles in our very first session. So I'm like, okay, good. It's actually real. It's going to work. And um, we start rolling these people through these three for 99 packages and they start converting to multi-session packages. And we realize we can't get them back in for three weeks because we were booked out so far. So I called you back up. We ordered another Pulse XL Pro whole setup that landed about a month after we had started with the first one. Within three weeks, both systems were booked solid 
three weeks out. And then we were like, oh, now we didn't anticipate this problem. Not only could we not convert, get those conversions into multi-session packages back on the schedule, but we were getting calls for acute injuries. And I'm like, oh, someone just broke their leg and we can't get them in for three weeks. They can't wait three weeks. Sure. So that's when we bought the EQXX the, from the equine line, because I'm like, oh, hey, I can run two people independently off the same machine. Give me one of those. And so for a long time, we actually, you know, pre-COVID when you could put two people in a room together, we had the EQXX with two chairs hooked up to it. And then so we'd be running one person in, in a chair or accessory on one side and another on the other side. And so we were able to not only bring in um, acute cases or, you know, do a detox protocol if we needed to, but we also were then able to offer a, a lower price point because it's not as um, dynamic of a machine. So we were able to offer a lower price point too. So that was really phenomenal. We did that for like a year and a half. Um, in our first year or not even full year, because remember we started April 1st and then a new machine and then a new machine. So kind of the staggered, but from April 1st to year end, as we added machines, we actually cleared over a hundred thousand dollars in PMF income in those first nine months, mm -hmm. you know, Fantastic. yeah. Fast forward to now we've added another XL pro we've added a rental unit and, you know, we're, we're doing, oh my goodness, like around 150,000 a year in PMF income, depending, you know, of course on the year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that's awesome. That's a great story. Very successful. Um, and, and in the, in the closing minutes here, we have a couple minutes left. Um, maybe you can just talk about what then led you to develop your program that you're now offering to other professionals that are not only in the pulse business, but in the wellness business in general. Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. So I had actually started doing business coaching for wellness professionals um, back in 2017. Uh, I want to say it was probably 2016. I had gone to a uh, retreat for wellness professionals and I was still a relatively new practitioner. You know, I had this other career uh, prior to getting into wellness. So I was you know, relatively new, but still having success, especially considering that I relocated to an area that had no idea what a naturopath was. But I'm um, anyway, I'm at this uh, retreat and I'm talking to colleagues who have been, you know, they're acupuncturists and chiropractors and they've been in practice for decades and they're like hand to mouth or just breaking even. And I'm like, oh my God, like why? And I realized that there's so many practitioners out there who I always say they rock at wellness, but they suck at business. And, and I, you know, I've just got this knack for business and I've done all kinds of additional business training. And I was like, I need to start sharing some of the skills and strategies that I've learned and perfected over the years with wellness professionals. So when I started with Pulse Centers and was having tremendous success, I'll never forget um, this like this little package came from Pulse Centers with a card that all the people in the office signed about like, you go girl. And I was like, wait a minute, what? Because doesn't everybody have the same machine? So why am I having this level of success that's getting the attention of headquarters when, you know, in just a few months, when there's practitioners all across the globe who have this same machine, this should be normal, right? And so I'm like, okay, I can see that I should start sharing some of the tools and strategies that I developed to launch my PEMF and get it booked to capacity for three weeks out before we even started, mm -hmm. and to continue to um, to have that kind of momentum where I need another machine and another machine and a rental machine. Yep. And so, by you know, I start pulsing April 1st. By July, I'm already coaching um, pulse professionals. And that has been, of course, dynamic too over time. I started with just one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then the demand got to the point where I had to do group coaching. And then the challenge with the group coaching was we'd have people who wanted to come in halfway or three quarters of the way through. Mm. And so now I've, I've really optimized and perfected the content, redone all of the videos, and um, 
have made it so that it's available in an evergreen format so that anyone 24 seven can enroll as soon as they're ready and get started with my entire business in a box package. It's like, you know, one, this is what you do before you launch. This is how you launch. This is what you do when the people are in the appointments. This is what you do afterwards. And COVID gave me the opportunity to put my money where my mouth is because when we did our reopening, um, once we were open to capacity, I'm like, okay, I'm going to implement my system and do a relaunch utilizing all of the steps that I've been training Pulse professionals across the globe in. And so I did a relaunch in August of 2020 to the tune of $25,000 in one month with my relaunch to just get that PEMF rocking and rolling again, get people in there, get and, and bring them through the process as it had been perfected. Because mm -hmm. when we first started, there were some things that worked great and some things that needed to be tweaked. And so then I was like, okay, here's an opportunity to make a second first impression and bring people through this process and then have a new opportunity to enroll them in a multi-session package and inspire them to tell others to come and try it. Yeah, that's great. The launch relaunch thing is a great, is a, is a great theme. And especially now relaunching may be something that's going around or, or need, you know, needs to be shared. Yeah. So as we close up here, um, what's the best way for people to reach you? And uh, we'll, we'll include some links below in the description. But uh, do you want to share any contact information at all? Uh, sure. Um, so I know Joe's going to drop a link in in the um, in the notes for the for this call. But you can also reach out to me at Patty P A T T I at Wellness Practice GPS, like Global Positioning System, because I'm such a gadget geek. I had to do that when with my brand WellnessPracticeGPS.com. That's great. Well, I really appreciate everything, Patty. Um, I think this, you know, was a great discussion and I think people will get a lot out of it. And uh, so again, as Patty said, we'll include links below and check out some of my other affiliates and partnerships below as well. And uh, we just appreciate everybody attending Resilient Business today. Thanks very much, Patty. Thanks, Joe.